42% of CEOs say they're not going to make any changes to their labor. That's down from 49%, but it's still the biggest percentage out of anything that CEOs say they're going to do. You are listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board. Welcome to this episode of CEO Perspectives, a signature series by the Conference Board. CEO Perspectives are conversations that take an objective, nonpartisan look at a range of subjects that matter most to business leaders. I'm Steve Odlin from the Conference Board and the host of this series. And in today's conversation, we're going to discuss the CEO Confidence Index, which is fresh for the first quarter of 2024. Joining me today is Dana Peterson, Chief Economist of the Conference Board. Dana, welcome. Hi, Steve. So Dana, just uh, for our listeners, talk a little bit about what is the Conference Board's measure of CEO confidence? Absolutely. It is a measure that we run quarterly where we canvass CEOs of some of the largest firms on the planet. And the key thing is that we are asking CEOs what it is that's keeping them up at night. What are their plans for the year? And certainly this one uh, spanned through January 16th through the 29th. So a really good segment of time where lots was happening in the world. So our measure of CEO confidence improved in the first quarter to 53 up from 46. What what are those, what, those numbers what, and what do they mean? How do you interpret these? Absolutely. Well, any measure above 50 means that CEOs are now more optimistic about what's ahead for the economy rather than less. And it's been negative, well, <laughs> below 50 for a very long time. So the fact that it popped up to 53 is notable. Yes, it's just barely over the threshold, but it shows that CEOs are potentially coming out of a funk that they were in last year, where they were very concerned about the possibility of recession in the U.S. So essentially, it, the theoretical, it, it goes theoretically zero to 100, with zero being terrible and 100 being perfect. And and of course, you never you never hit those extremes. So the, hence the, the 50 being the, the demarcation point at which you judge whether CEOs are confident. But this is an interesting thing, because you're right. It, I mean, they, they have been, CEOs, have been negative or pessimistic, I should say, for a couple of years. And so, you know, does this mean that everything's fine now? I don't think so. Again, it was just barely above 50. So I think there's still some caution out there among CEOs. And it probably also depends on who the CEO is and what industry he or she is in. So certainly last year, there were a number of industries that you know, effectively experienced a recession, especially finance and technology, transportation and warehousing. And we're even hearing um, in the first months of this year about layoffs in those sectors. But then there were other industries that did very well, especially those that continue to hire and leisure and hospitality, healthcare, also any sector that was uh, delivering services to consumers who were very excited about travel and going to the movies and those kinds of things. So I think that you know, the balance has shifted a little bit towards those who are more optimistic than less. But I still think that CEOs are still wary um, and they're still watching all the numbers just like we are. And they do have concerns about the outlook. So what are you hearing from these CEOs about economic conditions? Well, they said that the current economic conditions were better. So 32 percent of CEOs said conditions were improved compared to six months ago. And that's up from just 18 percent. So it's not half, but going from 18 to 32 is great. Um, but you also have the fact that those who are saying that conditions were worse reduced, shrunk from 32 percent to 22 percent. So that means there's some segment that's saying things aren't different, but Certainly those who said things are better, economic conditions are better, outweigh those that said conditions were worse. And in terms of expectations, that also strengthened. 36% of CEOs expect economic conditions to improve over the next six months. That's up from just 19% in the fourth quarter of 2023. And also 27% expect conditions, only 27% expect conditions to wor worsen. And that's significantly down from 47%. So all in all, we're seeing somewhat better optimism, a little less concern or deep concern from CEOs. Yeah, and this is the highest level that we've seen CEO confidence since 2019. So that's, um, well, it's back to that that level. There was a spike uh, after the pandemic, but but it it's um, it's just, I guess it's just feeling better, you know, when you talk to these CEOs. Does this mean that we're not gonna have a recession? 
Well, it doesn't say that. <laughs> Indeed, we didn't ask the question um, that we had been asking about whether or not CEOs expect recession. But our C-suite outlook survey, which we ran late last year, indicated that, yes, a number of U.S. CEOs and CEOs who are focused on the uh, on the U.S. are still concerned that you could see a slowdown or even a recession. But the news since then has been better. Um, consumers are still spending, although a lot of that spending is is debt laden, but they're still they still feel confident that they can spend and put things on credit cards because many consumers are working. And indeed, uh, it shows in this survey that a number of companies are still hoarding labor. They're holding on to people. And so if you have no fear of losing your job, then you feel more confident about spending. And certainly consumer spending has been what's been holding up or undercurrenting, underpinning the U.S. economy over the last year. It is interesting when you look at just the lines, the graphs of, of the CEO confidence over time, it, it, it has typically troughed, confidence has troughed during a recession or just before a recession. And it troughed here last year. Uh, and so you would have expected a recession in 2023. And I think most economists projected that and these CEOs projected that. So so it is interesting now that it's that it's inching up. What does that mean for you know the for your forecast for a recession in 2024? Sure. So we're having a bit of a change of heart because the data are just so overwhelming. We still think the U.S. economy is going to slow, but we may see data closer to zero or just above it rather than uh, slightly negative. It may feel like a recession for many, but we're easing back off of that recession call. And the key thing here and what kind of breaks the models, not only ours, but everyone else's, is labor shortages. So because companies suffered from severe labor shortages almost across the board, and even those who regain the labor, they're afraid of losing qualified workers, especially as baby boomers retire. So given that, companies are holding on to their workers. They're less likely to let people go. And typically, when you have weak economic conditions or fears of recession, companies lay off workers. But they didn't do that this time. And that's what really kept the consumer afloat last year in addition to residual um, stimulus. But for many lower income persons, they spent that already. So what was really underpinning them was the fact that wages were still growing pretty rapidly. And indeed, in this survey, it indicates that uh, many CEOs plan to continue to raise wages, but also CEOs are continuing to hire some of them. And many of them are not looking to shed any workers. So that is really the big difference. And what's so different about this uh, economic uh, cycle relative to others. We didn't have labor shortages. And so the normal things that you would expect and normal behaviors happen, but didn't this time. Yeah. And you've been, you know, you've been out there talking about this for the past couple of years saying, if we have a recession, it's going to look more like a job full recession. That, and that dynamic has happened. So you were, you were, you know, absolutely correct in that forecast. But as that, as people, you know, so typically when you're going into a recession or you're seeing a slowdown, CEOs will cut costs by getting, you know, you know, off shedding labor, layoffs, that sort of thing. But because of this dynamic and this experience that they've had coming out of the pandemic, you know, with skill set shortages and, you know, the fact they just couldn't find enough people, it's changed their behavior, which has in turn impacted the economy. It's really kind of an interesting dynamic that we've never seen before. Indeed, because 10,000 people retiring a day has never happened before. <laughs> yeah, and that's the, that's just the, the dynamic of the baby boomers uh, leaving the market. Well, how, you know, so how good are these CEOs at forecasting? You know, can we rely on these results then to say, okay, everything's going to be great? I think I hear you saying, no, there's still going to be a slowdown. But is there anything else in, in what they're forecasting that uh, that we need to look at here? Well, I think... The dynamics around the labor market and investments are, are pretty important here. So why don't I start with investments? So it's the case that 59% of CEOs have no plans to revise their capital spending plans. And only about 28% say that they're going to revise their spending plans upward. So that means there are a number of companies that are still just kind of standing in place and waiting to see what happens before they mobilize capital. 
And the companies that are investing, many of them are invest are those that are in, in industrials that are benefiting from reshoring and onshoring. So that's manufacturing construction. But you know, when we look at um, investment away from those areas, there's really not a lot going on. So I think companies are making a choice. They're making the choice between capital investments, cutting costs, and their labor forces. And they're saying it's better to keep the labor force around because we think that whatever might happen will be transitory and temporary, and we can come back and invest later. So we can sit on this cash and wait until later. So I think that's that's a really important message that we're getting here. Yeah. And, you know, some of those investments are cash, but, you know, most of them include some level of debt. And with interest rates here at, at you know, what looks like a peak, it, it, you know, it does encourage people to sort of wait until, you know, they, they the rates start coming down. And and uh, and so it's sort of a double whammy in this. What, what do you hear their plans for wage increases? Yeah, so. 67% anticipate that they will need to raise wages by three to five percentage points over the next year. And another 5% think that they're going to need to raise wages by more than 5%. That is astounding that you have that many CEOs saying that they need to continue to ramp up wages. And again, that's to address um, labor shortages, but also fear of losing talented workers and also the need to continue to attract talented workers. Yeah, and that should lead to real wage growth because we see inflation now below 3%. And typically wages rise, you know, generally with with inflation. So you would expect those those uh wages to come, those wage increases to be closer to two, two and a half percent. So the three to five, that's pretty stout. It is. And indeed, um, in recent data, we received the ECI wage data last week, which is a quarterly survey, which includes not only wages, but also benefits. And the overall ECI slowed on a year-on-year -year basis, but it was still very elevated compared to anything we saw prior to the pandemic. And you still had certain industries, especially those industries where you have to physically show up to work, see their wages continue to rise on a year-on-year -year basis. And then in last Friday's employment report, average hourly wages ticked up on a year-on-year -year basis. So we're still seeing these wage pressures and that's falling through to consumer price measures. So that's something the Fed needs to watch. And that's why Chair Powell said at the last FOMC meeting and also at the latest 60 Minutes Sunday night um, interview that the Fed wants to continue to wait and see more good data indicating that inflation is slowing. And certainly wage inflation is one aspect that's going to push against what the Fed is attempting to do. And you mentioned layoffs and, and you know, the fact that people are hoarding labor, but we also asked them you know, just directly about it. And, uh, and there's not a lot of layoffs being planned. Well, looking at this, 42% of CEOs say they're not going to make any changes to their labor. That's down from 49%, but it's still the biggest percentage out of anything that CEOs say they're going to do. But we did see a little bit of an uptick in the number saying that they are going to reduce the workforce from 13% to 23%. So I think that's consistent with what we've been hearing in the news where a lot of companies are announcing layoffs. But if you look at those companies, they're in finance, they're in tech, they're in transportation and warehousing. Many of the industries that struggled last year um, and were the former pandemic darlings, and now they're seeing the other side of that because demand has shifted. Also, interest rates have risen. Um, so if those companies that are very heavily levered, the cost of carrying those loans is much higher. So it's I think that this uptick, again, you know, is consistent with the news. But the fact that it hasn't shot up is also consistent with the fact that you haven't heard about many layoffs outside of those industries that I mentioned. Yeah, and and you had mentioned you know certain industries that are that are continuing to add uh, you know as we speak, but but going forward, do you have any other insights as to which ones are most likely to let people go? Well, we we did an analysis last year around this time, and we looked at which industries are most likely to let people go in an economic downturn or slowing, and it's probably going to be those highly discretionary industries. So okay. far, yes, people are still buying services. But those services cost more than they did. And if things get tight, 
and you notice that, you know, your friend, your next door neighbor is getting let go or they're worried about their jobs, then you're probably going to pull back on those discretionary types of spending. Things like entertainment, going to the movies, going to sporting events, but also personal care, right? Maybe you won't get your hair or your nails done as often as you did. But those are the kinds of industries, in addition to the ones that I mentioned, will probably also see some weakening in the labor market. We're talking about CEO confidence. We're going to take a short break and be right back. What does the future of work mean for your employees? How will your company navigate ESG? Will there be a global recession? At the conference board, our experts translate the latest research and economic analysis into insights and real-time problem solving for your organization. Membership at the conference board provides your team with an assortment of knowledge from economics, marketing and communications, ESG, public policy, and human capital. As a member, you'll have access to our center experts, member-exclusive events, data and benchmarking tools, and peer sharing that will help you understand the present and shape the future. Consider becoming a conference board member today by visiting www.conference-board.org. Welcome back to CEO Perspectives. I'm your host, Steve Odlin from the Conference Board, and I'm joined today by Dana Peterson, Chief Economist of the Conference Board. Okay, Dana, we're talking about the latest measure of CEO confidence. What do you see as, uh, what do CEOs see as the greatest challenges that they're affecting this year? Absolutely. Well, we asked two questions. What are the greatest challenges within the U.S. and what are the greatest challenges globally that will impact U.S. businesses. So the biggest challenge internally, unsurprisingly, is political uncertainty around the 2024 elections. Indeed, 51% of CEOs listed that as their top concern. And it's not surprising. Um, Lori Murray, who runs our Committee for Economic Development, noted that there are going to be over something close to 70 elections around the world, including the U.S.'s, 4 billion people voting. And in the U.S., you're going to have several hundred million people voting. And it's not clear what the outcome is going to be or what the policies are going to look like. So it's not surprising that CEOs are very concerned about that. They're also concerned about increased regulation and high interest rates, but much less so. Those two receive 15 and 12 percentage points, respectively. But it's those elections, that's number one. In terms of the global threat, 46% said spreading of existing wars. We know that there are wars going on in five out of seven continents. And certainly the big wars that are grabbing attention and are the most geopolitically risky include the ongoing war in Ukraine, um, which is continuing to cause disruptions in energy and food prices, but also a lot of uncertainty in terms of the future of Europe. And then also the Israel-Hamas war, where while the, that's, uh, the war is happening over a very small region and it's not necessarily affecting many commodities, but it's the implications of that are spreading out through the region, involving pulling in big uh, major economies like the US, China, Russia, India, and Iran. So all of these things have very meaningful implications for commodity prices for shipping of goods, we have the Red Sea issue where tankers are having to go around the Horn of Africa. And a lot of that's impacting things like metals and high tech, as well as to a lesser extent, food and energy. So all of these things are quite inflationary, but they also disrupt businesses and can disrupt supply chains, which creates inflation. So unsurprisingly, that's where many CEOs are focused. After that, they're concerned about deglobalization which received 19%, and U.S.-China tensions, which received 15%. Yeah, it's interesting. You talked about it in terms of uncertainty. And um, if there's one thing that CEOs hate, it's uncertainty. And you just have to understand what they're what they're dealing with. I mean, you, they're trying to plan capital spending. They're trying to plan, you know, how much labor to add. They're trying to plan where to add new products and, and services, what acquisitions to make. All of these things are dependent on some level of, of certainty, stability in the geopolitical environment, stability in supply chain, stability in cost, stability in cost of capital. And 
what we have right now is is all of these things you've talked about, which are contributing to, you know, very very unpredictable situation, and it's really hard for them to you know to to commit to these you know any kind of big investments when you've got all these shifting sands. So it's a uh, it's it's really a unique time. Now on the flip side, they did see potential for opportunities this year, didn't they? Yes, they did. And I love ending on a high note, especially being an economist <laughs> with a dismal scientist. But we do like positive news. And so, again, it was split into what are the greatest opportunities in the U.S. economy to benefit business this year and greatest opportunities globally to benefit business this year. And in terms of the U.S., number one was reduced inflation. That received 34 percent. And certainly we've seen inflation come off quite significantly over the last six to nine months. And a lot of that reflects, much of it reflects the work of the Fed um, in terms of raising interest rates to tackle inflation, but also the resolution of many supply chain disruptions. And indeed, when we look at what's still driving inflation, a big chunk of that is housing costs. And we see that slowing. So that's going to get us back to 2%. Also, Fed interest rate cuts, that received a 28 percentage point uh, re response from the response from the CEOs. And yes, the Fed has indicated that it plans to cut interest rates this year in their summary of economic projections, which is not a forecast, but just an, a, a, an agglomeration of what the uh, the committee members are thinking. They've said, look, we're, we're looking at 75 basis points of cuts this year. It could happen sooner, later it could be more. But for the most part, I think um, companies, and certainly we're optimistic, that the Fed will reduce some, in, some of the degree of tightness in financial conditions with interest rate cuts. In terms of the global issues, 27% said resolution of regional military conflict. So they're optimistic that something could get done, at least 27% of them, almost a third. And then about a quarter, or I'm sorry, one-fifth said AI and other technological advancements. So that's that's really notable, um, especially since in our C-suite outlook, many companies and executives believe that AI on balance is going to be a positive for business. It's going to make businesses much more effective, uh, increase the productivity of their workers, and potentially even lower costs and improve the bottom line in terms of greater profits and and consequently revenue. So those are all good things. And then a little bit smaller, but still notable, easier monetary policy. I would fold that up with you know cutting interest rates, um, but also easier monetary policy globally and faster global growth. We could see some upside surprises this year. Yeah, so it's it, it's almost the the, uh, the list of opportunities are almost the inverse of the the list of risks. I mean, you're talking about inflation, cost you know, debt, you know, so interest rates, uh, the geopolitical situation. And that, and I, I, so what we hear is that CEOs are saying it could, you know, these things can move either way. Don't, and, and so that's an unusual situation. Now, interest rates are, are mostly pointed down, but, but some of these other things, you know, s still are again, uncertain and, and causing it. Now we, we did a survey at the conference board. Your your team did the survey called the C suite outlook, and that was conducted in in December, so about a month earlier than this survey. That was among over twelve hundred executives and over six hundred CEOs globally. How did these results on confidence, you know, which are related but you know different questions, but how did these results compare and contrast to what we heard more broadly in the C suite outlook? Sure. A lot of it's pretty similar. Indeed, um, many CEOs in the C-suite outlook feared recession or slowdowns, either regionally or globally. Um, they were also concerned about inflation and wars, but they were also very optimistic about you know, finding new lines of business and expansion, even despite the disruptions. And again, AI really cropped up as something that that CEOs were very excited about. And they saw that as a way to potentially address some of the labor shortages that we're seeing and also to make their businesses um, function better, um, especially given all the challenges. And notably in terms of supply chains, for those businesses that were looking to augment supply chains, deploying AI was the number one tactic in terms of making those supply chains work better. So I see a lot of similarities here and still, Despite the fog and uncertainty, there's some optimism here. 
You know, it's it's interesting. We we also at the conference board do the consumer confidence index in addition to you know many other indices. But when you look at the CEO confidence index and the the consumer confidence index, they didn't completely align over the past year to 18 months. This seems like both CEOs and consumers as, as groups are feeling a little bit better. So they this kind of moving in the same direction now, isn't it? Yes, I would agree. And there are a couple of things that have been quite beneficial for the consumer. Again, labor shortages prevented many people from getting let go, so they didn't lose incomes. Their real incomes rose as inflation came off. Um, certainly, there are lots of complaints about how high prices are, but they're not rising as rapidly, and consumers see that. And also, they hear in the news on the 6 o'clock news that, yes, the Fed is going to cut interest rates. And as soon as the Fed pivoted away from raising interest rates, we saw mortgage rates come off, and consumers can look forward to even lower mortgage rates, which can help unlock the frozen housing market. So I think all of those things have made consumers feel better. We're seeing that in our survey. And so... And consumers also are generally more optimistic about the economy as well as their personal finances. So I think, finally, these two measures, what CEOs are thinking, what consumers are thinking, are moving in the same direction, and that direction is positive. Now, can we call victory? Not just yet, but we're much further along than we thought we were, and we certainly didn't see a recession last year. Well, a big part of that reason for that is because consumers still had a lot of firepower. They they were still spending like crazy. Now, and you know, you you mentioned earlier that uh, some of that was stimulus money that was left over. We're kind of through that now, and so it's we're kind of reliant on debt. But the good news is, as long as they can keep their jobs, and you've got income coming in, you you still are feeding that uh, that consumer spending, which of course is as everybody knows, is rough, roughly 70% of our GDP. So that's a really important thing. Absolutely. But we're already seeing some cracks in the facade here. Um, while real incomes are rising, consumer spending is high. Over the last six months, consumer spending, real consumer spending, which is you know overall spending less inflation, has been growing above real incomes. So that means that consumers are using debt. And we've seen debt rise um, and also delinquencies are on the rise, especially 90 day delinquency. So that's that's really severe if you haven't paid your bills over a period of three months. And also the amount that uh, consumers are spending on interest skyrocketed. And so that's not a good thing. So there are certainly some issues that we're concerned about with the consumer. Will it be enough to end the reign of, co of the consumer in terms of driving um, the expansion, well, we don't know. We're a little less convinced that it will, but certainly we do think that it's going to slow down the economy part of this year before we see a pickup later with lower interest rates and certainly lower inflation. You know, as long as you're mentioning debt, you were talking about consumer debt, you have to also mention the U.S. debt because that is a worry for CEOs as well. Yes, it was the number one geopolitical concern among U.S. CEOs. And among global CEOs, it was in the top five, thinking about sovereign debt wherever they, they operate. And certainly in the U.S., it is a big deal. And I think many CEOs have been focused on it, but it's really captured the attention of the American populace for three reasons. Well, last year we had a debt ceiling debacle, but this time we fear that we might go over the edge and actually default. And we were very close to that. We pulled back, but still, that was not a good episode. We also saw in the fall that uh, there were concerns about the Treasury's ability to issue more debt. And certainly as debt deficits, annual budget deficits enlarge and debt piles up, the Treasury has to issue more debt to pay for the old debt. And so there were some big concerns about that and that roiled markets. But then I think the most visible thing is the fact that net interest, which is the interest that the government pays on sovereign debt, spiked. Why? Because it, the Fed raised interest rates. And so that happened sooner than anyone thought. Indeed, over the next decade, net interest payments are going to outweigh payments on everything else in terms of spending. So those three things together really capture the attention, I think, of CEOs, and they're very worried. Can we continue to carry on 
carry this amount of debt. Um, can we pay it off? Can we pay it down? Because there are significant negative implications for financial markets, the economy, and the ability of the U.S. to continue to be a leader in the world. Any other final points that you want to make on this survey? Sure. I mean, there were lots of things to be concerned about, but there are also lots of things to be uh, happy about. And certainly it seems that CEOs are coming out of a deep depression that they were in over the last few years, and they're seeing things a, a little bit more optimistically. Yes, they do have a number of concerns that we saw for the U.S. and globally, but they also believe that there is hope that we can get over many of these humps and that we can see growth for the future. All right. That's great. Dana Peterson, thanks for being with us today. Thank you, Steve. And thanks to all of you for listening in to CEO Perspectives. Every week, I'll be joined by a prominent thought leader to provide insights on the issues of our time. We'll cover leading topics in economics, geopolitics, public policy, and more. Please share CEO Perspectives with your colleagues, your friends, with everybody who cares about the economy. I'm Steve Odlin, and this series has been brought to you by the Conference Board. You have been listening to CEO Perspectives, a podcast by the Conference Board.